salutations, welcome back to the show, welcome back to Suggestion Session. I'm not gonna waste too much time on this intro. This is all I've been seeing in my comments, so I'm half doing it to do it, half doing it so that people stop commenting about it, unless you're commenting on the video. My Chemical Romance, Three Chairs for Free Revenge, woohoo! This is the, probably the most hyped album that I've seen yet in my comments, other than uh, the hype that's building for the new Panic album. The hype around the hiatus for 21 Pilots. Uh, there's, there's just a lot of hype around this. So as you remember, I enjoyed the Black Parade. I didn't enjoy Danger Days. So I'm hoping that this is a much better experience. Like I said, I'm not gonna spend too much time on the intro and hopefully I enjoy it. I'm, I'm hoping for the best. Open heart, open mind, open ears. Let's see what this album has to offer. This is three cheers for sweet revenge for my chemical romance. Number one, Helena. So long and good night. melody there, that was nice. Punched it back in. I like that. Cool opener. Number two. Give him hell, kid. I'm already thinking back to the Patrick Henry days when I would just talk to people who had their hair like right there on their nose and I would be like, why do you wear your hair like that? And they were like, because nothing matters. And I was like, okay, have a good day. Number three to the end. <laughs> Switch up in melody. See, when there's structure, that that that's more inclined for me to bop with it. Like, I like how they switch up the melody for the verse and for the hook. That's nice. I like that. Through. 
Hey, shout out to the vocals there too. Current favorite. Yeah, I like that one the best so far. Uh, I wasn't feeling it in the opening goings. I was like, uh-oh, this, this might be another one of them Danger Days like tracks. Where I ride, you know, whatever whatever catches me off guard is what takes me out of it. But uh, they won me over. The melody was hard. Vocals were dope. Drums were crazy. I liked it. It was dope. Favorite track so far. Let's keep going. Number four. You know what they do to guys like us in prison. Oh, my. In the center of a restaurant, they say, come with your arms raised high. Well, they're never gonna get me or against your face in your life. I can't lie, just like another rest. Waiting in my heart for your time. Joker making all the appearances on these MCR albums, people. I need to know. Uh, that track was kind of a mess. <laughs> Woof. That was a lot to take in in just two minutes and 53 seconds. Number five. I'm not okay, I promise. Need a couple more listens with that one. I know that's the hit. That's probably your favorite song, and you're offended. I get it. Mm. The delivery is always going to be strong. I feel with the albums, but um, yeah, it was it was good. Number six, the Ghost of You. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. I can let the vocals slide. I can give the vocals a pass. This melody is dope as hell. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Come through undertone. I see you. Yeah. <laughs>
I didn't really care for the vocal performance on that. Uh, that's the only time I haven't really liked uh, the delivery on the song. I don't know, the, vo the vocals felt a little flat for me on that track, but it didn't hurt. It didn't take away from the experience of the song. Like, like I said, I can give it a pass. Like, the song was so beautiful with the way that it was put together that the vocals were like the only thing about it. Like a 9 out of 10 type of situation. Like, you have 10 elements and 9 of them work? That's a passing grade. Number 7, The Jet Set Life Is Gonna Kill You. Oh, here it come. stuff I liked but overall it didn't move me so I don't know it was all right it was cool number eight interlude gonna carry over into the next song that was a dope transition i like that this is number nine thank you for the venom by the statement that they've been doing that better than everybody else that I've covered. The solos, the solos are on point. Love the finality of that one. That one was dope. I like that one a lot. That's one I would go back to for sure. It has all the attitude that I love about this era of music. Um, it was wild at the beginning. I didn't really like. I didn't really like the beginning, but it definitely just it 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 got so much better as it went on. So I like the growth that that song had. It was dope. It was dope. I messed with it. Number ten, hang 'em high. What is this? <laughs> oh my. 
that feels like the moment right before they would shut the venue down because the band was getting too crazy on stage. Been to a couple of those shows. I don't enjoy mosh pits. <laughs> you could assume what kind of a time that was for me. Coming up on the last bit of tracks. I think I've, I, I, I'm, I'm dead sure I've heard this somewhere. I just don't remember it at all. But this name is already familiar. Number 11. It's not a fashion statement. It's a death wish. Jesus, that's just so depressing. <laughs> Even though I didn't really like that song, I love how it ended. The whole classic nostalgia feel that I love so much. So, shout out to that one. I mean, you know, I think the song title was a bit more interesting than the song itself. But, um, it's still, it's still, I feel like, I still, I still feel like that song, more than a few others on here, got its message across. Whatever, whatever they were trying to convey, I feel like they did that on that song more so than a few others that I've heard. So, for the most part, it was cool. Number 12, Cemetery Drive. Giving me a lot of small set vibes for some reason. It's just such a heavy, heavy image, heavy lyric. Mm, okay. So I won't stop dying, won't stop lying. If you want, I'll keep on crying. Did you get what you Number 13, I never told you what I do for a living.
<laughs> that just makes me think of my homies practicing in their garage. All right, solid ending. Let's let's talk about it. Let's let's get into the after project talk. All right, so after finishing three cheers for sweet revenge, uh, I feel like the concept was just mainly death. Like this, this was a very depressing album, very dark, very hopeless album in a sense. But I don't, I don't say that to even come across as crass or as condescending. I guess, and this is just my inference from a first listen. This is this probably was just that venting album that people needed to hear. Whoever whoever else was going through whatever they were going through as a collective, you know, they all were just pouring it out in this music. And I definitely feel like they were at a low point in their life and they created at a low point, which resulted in a high point, if that makes sense. Maybe there was a couple of, you know, the brighter side type lyrics in here, but this felt very just, very hardcore, very dark, very secluded, very recluse. Like, it, it didn't feel like a, a, a an inviting album at all. Like, this is the kind of that, you know, get out my room type record. And I again, I don't say that to make a joke or to even come across as crass or rude or whatever, but uh, it's a very standoffish record. There's a lot of good stuff on here, though. Um, you know, I'm a little disappointed because it was so hyped up, but... Um, it's definitely better than Danger Days. Like, like levels, light years better than Danger Days. Like, this, I could go back to a couple songs in here. I've yet to even think about Danger Days until doing this. Being the basic fan and the new listener that I am, I kind of miss the cinematic feel that the Black Parade had, but I love the nostalgic feeling that this album has. Like, this is definitely more of a throwback to the era where this was the prominent sound of the time. I did like, um... The grunge feel, I love the attitude, obviously. The lyrics were depressing as shit, but um, the the way that the songs were put together was really impressive for being 14 years old. So this was way more enjoyable than Danger Days, but it doesn't leave me as fulfilled as the Black Parade did. Cause I, ain't, I hadn't even heard the Black Parade in its entirety when I did it. And I left like, I left on a high after that. I was like, whoa, this was great. So, um. I'm not I'm not all the way satisfied with Three Cheers, but it was definitely a much more fun and satisfying ride than Danger Days was. Like I'm I'm not left with a bitter taste in my mouth. I'm like, wow, they did that. 2004, that was what they were doing. I think the Black Parade had much more of a concept to it and you know, it it, it captivated a wider audience because it felt like a movie, felt like a soundtrack as opposed to an expressive creation in this album. And, you know, that's not to downplay the significance of this or that, but it just definitely seems like this was the album that the core fans, you know, obviously from my comment section, but this is definitely, it definitely, this definitely seems like the album that the core fans uh, ate up when it was new, saw it, moshed to it at the concerts, you know, this, this feels like the album for those selective people that really understood and were probably going through what the band was going through at the time, so I like that it's, it's, a cornerstone for that piece of time. You know what I mean? Like, I like that this existed for the people that hated whatever else that was out that they felt like wasn't speaking to them. So, and I think that's another thing. I think because most of this music doesn't speak to me, I don't really go crazy about it. But when I feel the music, I can go crazy about it. So like, while I may miss the concept and while I may not really care to dive deep and read deep into what they're really trying to say, I enjoy the music. And for me, that's enough. For you, that might be offending your whole existence. And again, I apologize for that, but, you know, me being an outsider with this whole discography and the band and pretty much this genre in general, uh, well, this era of it, because I, I listen to a whole bunch of stuff now, but me being so unfamiliar with how important this era was to people, I think it's it's harder for me to really jump into it and be like, yeah, and I mainly move off of the nostalgia that it gives me, if you haven't noticed, but... You know, when it slaps, it slaps. So, I didn't love the album, but I did enjoy listening to it. So, I'm looking forward to the rest of the MCR albums. Let's see what they have to offer. That's going to do it for this suggestion session. I hope you guys are satisfied. I hope you guys are happy with it. Like, share, subscribe to Home 9. You know the biz, you know what it is. Gerald O'Brien, and I'm out. <laughs>